Are you new to the Kajabi platform and struggling with a few different errors or issues that you just can't seem to figure out how to fix? In this video, I'm going to troubleshoot with you four of the most common questions that I see get asked in the Kajabi Hero official community group on Facebook and help you get those issues resolved. Let's dive in. If we haven't met yet, I'm Courtney Abinger, a Kajabi specialist. I have over four years of experience working in the Kajabi platform, and I've worked with hundreds of clients setting up their online courses and memberships in Kajabi. I'm also Kajabi certified through the Heart Centered Apprentice program, as well as through the Kajabi Experts Marketplace that Kajabi itself has created. I absolutely love working with online course and membership creators with setting up their course and membership tech in Kajabi. So I hope all of these videos and resources that I have for you are helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when new videos are released. Let's jump in. This first issue is one that comes up when you're trying to make a test purchase for one of your offers. This is great to do to make sure that everything is working properly um, before you share your checkout link with any potential students. But here's where the issue comes in. If you just go to your offers page, you find your offer that you wanna make your test purchase for. And if you just click this preview button to pull up the um, preview page, you'll notice it says, hey, you're in preview mode, payments are disabled. So what happens is a lot of people still try to add in their information here so that they can make a purchase. But you're gonna see what happens next when we try to do that. They're gonna say, okay, great, oh, there's no button for me to purchase. This checkout is disabled while previewing. Yes, that's because you cannot purchase from the preview tab. Okay, second issue that you may run into is you're like, okay, well, let me just grab the link and open up a new tab, paste the link, and then try again. So you can see now we're on the actual link, so we're not previewing it. But once again, if you try to add your information in and it's a loading, loading, okay. And then we're gonna add in all of our credit card information. And you can check to you know store your card or not, but when you hit complete purchase, You're going to see this, you don't have permission to access that page. Once again, Kajabi is recognizing that you are logged in as an administrator and it recognizes that um, you're the account holder and it's not going to let you purchase from your own account. So here is the workaround for that. Instead, you're going to grab that link again but this time you're gonna to go to an incognito window. This incognito window is going to make it so that it's not recognizing that you're an administrator of your Kajabi account. So this time you're gonna add in your information again and click complete purchase and it will actually make the purchase this time instead of getting that error message. So make sure to use that link not the preview link but the actual link and do it in an incognito window and then you'll have no problems testing this out here's a sample thank you page inside of my kajabi account and you'll notice if I'm previewing this thank you page here on the desktop view, we've got the um, congratulations information, um, uh, image, and then the footer. So it's pretty basic here. But then if I click this mobile view, you can see I've got the same information just kind of in the more narrower mobile view. But then I've got this random section of text down here 
that I didn't see on the desktop view. So this can be super frustrating if you're not sure where this is even coming from. So once again, if we go back to desktop view, it's gone, it has disappeared. Here is what you need to do in order to fix that. You're gonna go over to this sections tab on the left-hand side, and you're gonna take note of what different sections you have on your page. If we go into the hero section, that's this top section right here, you'll notice if we go down, there is section settings. And if I click on the desktop layout, you can see I have the option to actually hide this section just on desktop. If I chose that option, if I checked that box, you can see it has disappeared from desktop layout. But if I go back to mobile layout, it's still there. Now, if I scroll down, there is this mobile layout section. If I check that box as well, hide section and click save, you can see that it will disappear from the mobile view as well. So if I uncheck that section, and then if I uncheck the desktop layout and click save, now you can see that it's back on both mobile and desktop views. So now I'm gonna go down to my next section. I just have this one labeled as text section for now. And if I go to desktop view, you can see that it's checked here to hide that section. So that is why it is hiding right now. But if I go down to mobile view, it was not checked to hide that section on mobile. So it is, or it was showing up on mobile view. So you're just gonna wanna go through all of your sections and make sure that if you have any that you want to be only visible on desktop or layout, that you have the appropriate boxes either checked or unchecked. Good luck with going through and um, making sure that your visibility is how you want it on both desktop and mobile. If you're noticing that people are opting in to your form, maybe you've got a lead magnet or a freebie set up, but they're not actually being added to your email list, here is why. So inside your form, you're gonna notice this opt-in settings. There are two options here. You most likely have double opt-in set up. That is what is recommended, um, but it makes contacts confirm their subscription via another email before they get added to your email list. So what happens is they opt into your freebie and then they get sent an email where they have to click a link confirming their subscription before they're officially added to your email list so that you can send them um, newsletters or additional marketing emails, whatever it is that you wanna send them. So. The other option is single opt-in. If single opt-in is turned on, then it's going to remove that extra step of them having to click the link to confirm their email, and it'll just automatically add them to your email list. You're gonna wanna check where you are located. There are different rules and regulations around these different um, options. I am no expert by any means. Um, so do your research on those, but just know that that's the difference um, in Kajabi between these two options. If you go to your settings and you go to your email template, you'll see here in this email templates list this double opt-in email. So this is the email that they're actually getting um, that's asking them to confirm their subscription. So you'll notice here, it's going to um, give them a button to click to confirm their subscription. So you can personalize this a little bit more if you would like to as well. Um, the other option is to add on your thank you page a note or a reminder for them that they must confirm their subscription before they can get any further emails from you. So just make it really clear on your thank you page. That way, if they don't see that double opt-in email come through, they can also check their spam folder and are on more of a lookout for it. So do your best to communicate to them that they need to confirm their subscription in order to get further emails if you're gonna leave double opt-in turned on.
let's say that you're selling something on Kajabi that isn't a course or a membership. Maybe it is something like a paid workshop that's going to be live and they don't actually need to log in to a course or membership to access it. If you're selling it through Kajabi, it is unfortunately going to force them to create an account in order to purchase from you if they don't already have an account on your Kajabi site. There's currently not a workaround for this, but you can simplify and make it a little bit less confusing with some of your checkout settings. So go into your offer that you've created. I'm just gonna use this early bird pricing offer as an example. And um, we're going to click into that offer to customize it. And then go to your button at the top right that says edit checkout. And you'll notice over here on the left hand side, we've got a few different options here. And one of those options is going to be this additional settings option. And you'll notice here that it has this option for a login requirement. If you have, if you have this turned off, that is totally fine. Returning members don't need to log in. Um, but if you have this option chosen, then it's going to ask them to create an account if they don't already have one with the email address that they are using. So keep that in mind. The other option is to have returning members log in in order to purchase. And then if they are a new member, it is going to actually collect their password for them on the checkout page. So if we click save, you can see now that it's going to ask them to create their password and confirm their password right here. That is a great option to reduce the um, confusion where it has the extra step after they purchase that's asking them to create an account. They might be wondering what they need to create an account for if it's not a course or a membership. Additionally, over here on the left-hand side, you can add some text here explaining that they need to set up a password and create their account, but when they log in, that there won't actually be anything um, waiting for them inside of that portal. So. Just know for right now, they do have to create an account, um, but you can do a couple things to reduce the confusion for them.